This is the Carlton Podcast. Here's your host, Tony Moclair. Hello and welcome to the Carlton Podcast. Mitch Robertson has been subbed this week with, can I just say, the star of SEN Radio, Michael Jamo Jamison. Hello, Jamo. How are you, mate? Lovely to have you back. Lovely to be back. Tell us about your stint on SEN recently. Y- yes, well, um, my manager usually has a, a permanent spot on Wednesday nights and he's gone a little junket overseas for a few weeks, so he asked if I'd like to fill in and they'd obviously heard the, the fantastic work that I've done with you in the past and yes. they, they called me up. And how did you go? It was an hour or so on air? Yeah, well, it was an hour, you know, give or take with all the ads and the promos and I actually really enjoyed it. Um, you know, Finey, anyone who knows Mark Finey is a, a very laid back character mm. and so he was uh, made it very easy for me and you know, I took a great deal of confidence out of the experiences that I've had with you in the past, mate. Great. Well, okay. That's Little League compared to the Carlton Podcast, as you know. And we're True. right back in the firing line for another week. Uh, Robbo isn't here. He's got Apparently, he's got an appointment to get to. I.e., when things get a little bit tough, That's right. Mitch goes missing. Yeah. He uh, could not stand the heat. He's got out of the kitchen. But uh, our very special guest today, and I'm very excited to have this bloke in, he was the Blues' first draft pick in the 2012 National Draft at number 11. He was recruited from Sandville Club Central Districts. He's a younger brother of Geelong's Daniel Menzel. I hope that doesn't give away who we've got in today. He's played 16 games for the Blues. He's kicked 20 goals. His name sounds like an erectile dysfunction medication. He is Troy Menzel. Troy Menzel, Troy Menzel. Hey, uh, guys. I'm sorry, not sure about that one. But <laughs> what number did you get drafted? Number 11, Michael. Skinny draft. I don't, hey, so well, he, for, Troy, for, from what I've heard, they, they reckon it was a very talented draft for that one. So, Well, that's the way you've been playing. Can I just say it has been thrilling this year to watch your form? Thank you. It's, it's been good to get a couple of games in this year and play some consistent footy. Uh, welcome to the podcast for the first time. Have you been briefed at all on what the podcast entails? Is there... You know, is there any trepidation at all, Troy? Um, I, think, I think I said to a couple of media... Girls that I, I heard it the first time and um, wasn't a big fan of Mitch on it, so I hadn't really listened to it then. But no, nah, it's um, it's good to be on here. I've been All saying right. I've been saying it for months, mate. I've been now, it for well, months. can you just tell tell us where you've just come from, Troy? Where, um, where in the club? In in the building? Yeah, I've I've just had to to do a bike session and, and a little bit of a light run in the altitude room. Um, Jamo tried to give me the hurry on, but. Priorities, priorities. Priorities, yeah. yeah. What is, now, Jambo, what is the altitude room? Can you tell us? Is it suspended, what, 100 <laughs> metres above Princess Park? Or what? tell us how that works. It's just to, um, you know, replicate the, the conditions that we've trained in in, in, the, in the pre-season overseas. So I think the, um, the machinery in there can replicate sort of 3,000 you know, metres above sea level. So just to be, so we can maintain, you know, some of the work that we did in the pre-season in Arizona. Okay, um, and so what that's for stamina, is it for um, getting the blood to be more, uh, like your body more efficient with its oxygen? Yeah, look, I know. I, I trained know, as a doctor, Troy. I only know the very, very basics about it, but it's, you know, altitude, altitude is so the oxygen's thinner, so you have to work a lot harder. So if you work harder, then when you come out, then it should be easier to, to work. Well, that's the theory. That. Now, uh, there's a few things we obviously have to get through today. You've come in in a very uh, action-packed week, Troy. Um, the Brisbane post-mortem. Uh, two words, Jamo. What happened? Yes, well, um, you know, sometimes you walk out of those sort of games tones and you don't know the answers. Um, I'm not sure which is more disappointing, but um, for me it was it was pretty evident that Brisbane simply... You know, as hard as this is to say, wanted it more. They had more mm. more players on the park that were willing to, you know, work harder for longer. Um, we had some great, great instructions pre-game from the coaching, you know, panel that looking back on if we had have been you know, compliant and followed through on those instructions, we would have won the game. But, you know, to put it simply, we didn't do the things that the, the coaches asked for long enough. Troy, what was your take on the game? Yeah, very similar to, to what Michael said then. Um, we definitely had the chances throughout the game to, to definitely take a stranglehold on it and, and run away with it. But, yeah, we um, probably didn't comply with, with game structures fully um, late in the game. And, and yeah, as, as Jamo said, it just seemed that they wanted a bit more than us in, in the end, as hard as it is to say. Was there complacency playing the bottom side? Was there maybe a, a thing of mental preparation uh, at play? Look, 
I, look, I don't think so. I, I don't think we're going well enough to be complacent against any side. I think, one, what I've already mentioned, and two, Brisbane um, handled the conditions a lot better. Mm. You know, even though we'd been, you know, instructed to play a certain way because of the conditions, and we probably, you know, from the supporters watching it, probably were a bit cute, you know, early. Um, mm. Didn't play. It wasn't wet weather footy, but it was certainly slippery up there, and we were probably a bit cute early. And, you know, the five goals at the start of the game that we gave up were you know, probably the difference in the end. Uh, I mean, it, look, it was heartening in one sense that, uh, you know, we were able to come back and, uh, uh, you know, make good that deficit. You, uh, how was Mick after the game, Jamo, and your experience having, you know, uh, how did he react to this defeat as, a, as opposed to how he's reacted to other defeats? Uh, Mick's typically pretty, uh, yeah, typically pretty, pretty measured, you know, regardless of, of results, he, no doubt he'll he'll let us know in no uncertain ways when we haven't played well and and the reasons you know for that. Like any coach, but um, I don't know if I've seen Mick more disappointed after a loss as I have you know this week. Um, I'm sure he thought that we were you know maybe turned a corner and we're building some mo- momentum and, and no di- no doubt feels like you know that we've probably taken a step backwards. So he's yeah. been disappointed, but. You know, you give him a day, and, and he, he's pretty quick to focus on you know on the week coming up. So that's what we're all about now. Troy, how was Yaz after that particular mark? That well, I could have sworn was a mark, but wasn't paid. Um, how was he after the game? Yeah, um, obviously quite disappointed. I think I think regardless whether well the decision was if we still lost it, then it would have been the same feeling. Um, definitely didn't feel as if it was on him or. Or anything like that, but um, yeah, I, was, I had, actually haven't seen the the footage of of what happened, but I've heard that it, it was probably a free kick. Um, but yeah, it's it definitely just disappointed in, in the loss more yeah. so. There were three utterly baffling umpiring decisions. You're supposed to say that umpiring never decides the course of a game. I don't see how anyone can push that argument because, from a supporter's point of view, they were just. Uh, really strange umpiring decisions, and you could have sworn that Jonathan Brown's dad was umpiring. I do want to speak to you, though, Jamo, being in the leadership group. Jared Waite, he is an intensely frustrating character. He gave away that 50 metres. Um, will he face any punishment, or do we just draw the line there and just say, look, he had a brain snap? I mean, what from the leadership from, from the leadership group, how, how do you deal with that kind of recurring behaviour from him? Yeah, it's, I think firstly it's important to note that you know, as an isolated incident, that was just the tip of the iceberg of of um, the things that went wrong on the weekend. But mm. uh, you know, on the ground, on the ground after the game, I think you know a few guys spoke to Wadey to put it to put it nicely that you know that's not acceptable. And I think as long as he feels that you know he owes the group one, um, you know that that's good that's good enough. And if he comes out this week and and responds in a in a positive manner, then you know that's what we ask. Do you think he will? Oh, I've got I've got great confidence. Then when Wadey's playing his best footy, um, he's you know we can't do without him. So um, mm. and I've got no you know no no doubts that he'll be trying his utmost to to repay the boys. Even though look, I don't want to make it sound like you know the game was his fault. Mm. Um, that was just one incident. But um, and Yaz was exactly the same thing, giving a fifty away away late as well. So we don't want any of that ill discipline. Um, we're not going well enough to to allow allow things like that to happen. So those boys will um, you know make sure that doesn't happen again. Yeah, it's the old saying that uh, success has a thousand fathers, but failure is an orphan. It's, uh, it's that one, which I think uh, sums up the match perfectly. Now, um, Jamo, you're part of the leadership group, so we have to address the Snapchatting elephant in the room. Um, can you tell me uh, how it unfolded with Josh Bootsma? We know that he's been sacked from the club, but um, you were told in a in a meeting of the players. What was your response? Yeah, the players were called in on our our day off to uh, attend a meeting that at the time we weren't sure what was for, and then um, you know Andrew McKay came in and told us that Boots's uh, contract had been terminated, and you know explained. The, the reasons behind that and, and we know as much as you know anyone else that it was inappropriate use of uh, social media so you know as disappointing it is for, for Josh and the club you know for this to happen you know any time but you know in the middle of the year is is disappointing but um, you know it's important to note that Josh has been given you know numerous opportunities to try and you know resurrect his 
his career as an AFL footballer over the last few years and, and hasn't taken those opportunities. And the, and the club's obviously felt that you know, the time that was being put into him can now be put into some of the fantastic young players you know, that we've got coming through. Um, I, you're not a, a father. I can tell you that I'm a father. And my uh, reaction to impending fatherhood was not to do what he did. He's, um, uh, I mean, that some people have said, look, maybe he's under a lot of pressure, but how much pressure was he actually under? I mean, was he, it's not like he was carrying the weight of expectations or it's not like he was playing in the seniors every week. What, I mean, what do you put it down to? Was it just a brain snap or as he said, it's a pattern of behaviour? Yeah, I think it, look, I think Josh is just you know, come into the system and probably being been a little bit, you know, immature in his in development. He's been, you know, slow to to grasp, you know, the behaviours and, you know, the values and the standards that we expect, you know, as an AFL professional. And unfortunately for him, it's probably been just a timing thing. If he had been drafted, you know, four or five years down the track when he, you know, had time to mature, then, you know, things could have turned out differently. But he's just made some decisions that aren't, um, you know, appropriate, obviously, and, and the club had to act. Uh, now, the club will continue to offer counselling and welfare support to Josh in the immediate future. We've got to think of his partner. Um, obviously, not a great situation for her. So, um, look, we, we certainly hope them uh, the best. Do you think there's hope for Josh? Do you think he can uh, resurrect a playing career maybe with another club? Or, or do you think uh, other clubs will look askance at somebody of his character shall we say uh look possibly because you know the mistakes that josh has made in the past i just want to reiterate that, that you know they're not malicious things and they weren't things that he'd obviously you know planned and, and gone into and thought you know i can't be bothered he is just a, a young kid that was mm. you know probably found himself in the in the um in the afl system maybe a little bit soon so maybe you know in a few years down the track when he you know develops and matures then there might be other opportunities for him Troy, tell us about your year. It's been very, very exciting to watch, you know, just your gameplay and your one percenters, your shepherding of goals uh, against Adelaide. I think there was two that you helped get through there. It's it's just been really exciting to watch and it is no surprise that they've bestowed the number two on you because that's a big number at Carlton. Yeah, well, um, it's actually funny you say about those one percenters because I think Jamo's always saying that the forwards are quite selfish up there, so... Um, <laughs> If he can see some footage of, of some unselfishness, then we might have to have oh, that by. No, you, you, seriously, Jamo, you, you're you down the other end of the ground. This man's work at, uh, you know, those million-dollar one percenters has been sensational. He is an exception. Uh, he's he's fantastic with his work rate and his, his defensive efforts up there. It is the, you know, the, the Hollywood boy forwards, you know, could learn something off the young fella sitting next to me. And that's from a gun forward too, a man who's kicked a career <laughs> total of... Two. Two goals. Do you, do you, want, to, do you want to tell him your, your points as well there, Jamo? No, look, let's just um, stick to the script. I think, <laughs> I, I think it's two goals, eight in total, so it's not a great strike rate. Um, One straight this year. What's your percentage this year? I'm 100%. Oh, we're just going off career stats here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's your career percentage? I couldn't tell you. Okay. okay well, I think on. we'd need uh, Foxtel for that. Remember, Jamo Foxtel gave you a 68% chance of getting that goal, Proved and you them, drilled right? it. So well, well done. Um, Sam Doherty had a really good game that, uh, playing against his old club. Yeah, Sam's come in a couple of weeks ago and he's, he's played some really good footy um, since he's come in. Um, yeah, he's had 30 on the weekend and, and um, just really gave us, gave us something in the middle, I guess, um, going forward and, and giving the forwards an opportunity to kick some goals. Just um, back to where I was going earlier, um, Troy, you've seemed to have grabbed your chance this year with both hands. Can you just tell us about your journey to the senior group, how how that has progressed since you got to Carlton? Um, yeah, I guess the big difference is last year um, I was hindered a bit. I didn't really have much of a pre-season um, or leading up to the year. Didn't get much work work in and this year I've been able to touch wood not have any injuries and, and um, get a full pre-season in and from that I guess... I've just been able to play some good, consistent footy and um, been able to hold down a spot for the last, last few weeks now. So it's, it's been good, um, definitely good experience and good learning curve to be able to play some consistent senior games. And I, I know we always talk about this, Jamo, the shift from VFL to AFL and the speed. Have you noticed that or what are the, what are the great differences between the two codes? Yeah, I guess everyone that comes up and plays says the, the intensity and speed is, is a big one. It's just that much quicker. Um, you just got to be switched on all the time. I guess that's a, the big difference. 
And in terms of motivating yourself at VFL, because there were, you know, there were great raps about you that you kept putting in great efforts. That, that motivation, you are obviously um, motivating yourself to get, uh, you know, a position in the seniors. Yeah, definitely. Um, we're coming to the club. I, I wasn't really planning on, on wanting to play VFL for too long, so um, I was definitely trying to do all that I could to to get a senior spot. And then um, once I did, I, I wanted to try the best I can to hold on to it and do everything in my power that I could. You have to explain what the VFL is to Michael Jamison because he's so good. Seriously, he is, he is a quality, such a quality. He's a swing role player. You know, you can put him any end of the ground. He just doesn't know what the VFL is because he's never played it, oh, I like think, literally. I think what's even worse is he, he doesn't know the 10 boys that are playing VFL um, each week at the moment. So, <laughs> it's Well, he should know that. Being in the leadership group, he should know everybody's name. The first one there every week to support the Bull Ants, mate. Oh, of course you are. Yeah. Uh, they've changed to the Northern Blues, so you're a bit behind <laughs> on that one. Northern yeah. Blues, Bull Ants. I think I'm still there in, there in spirit. There you go. All right. Um, I've got a question for you. Yes, shoot. Man, man with uh, always something to say. Yeah. I want to throw one back at you. All right. It's a, sort of like a riddle. Oh, okay. Will you answer truthfully? I'll try. It's a yes or no answer is what I'm looking for. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Will the next word you say be no? <laughs> Gee, that's good. It's a good one, isn't it? Yeah. You can use that. Have you have you have you gone all zen on me now? A little bit. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Okay. I've got another one if you want it. Yes, please. What happens if Pinocchio says, "My na- my nose will grow now"? Is he lying? His nose will grow. But, but then he could be lying. But then he's just said, "My nose will grow," so he's not lying. So it won't grow. I've I've thought about this one for for hours. So. <laughs> Could go on for a while. You you had a lot of time in that flight back from Brisbane, didn't you? Because <laughs> it was very quiet in the plane, and you were flipping through what what sort of book on the way home, Gemma? They're just a couple of paradoxes. That's I, what they're called, guys. So. No, I like that. Um, speaking of paradoxes, um, beating Geelong uh, on the rebound from a hundred point thrashing at the hands of Sydney. How do you think they'll be when they come out of the gate, Gemma? Oh, no doubt they'll they'll want to respond, but you know I. I I can't imagine it being any more so than us. Um, you know, we've come off a an equally as disappointing loss. Um, so the boys have, you know, had a fantastic session today, um, and really looking forward, you know, to the opportunity, you know, to take on one of the better t- teams in the comp. And you know, people throw around the line that we've got nothing to lose, but I don't really buy into that. You know, we're four and four and six. So if you try and tell me we've got nothing to lose, I'll. I'll tell you, having a, a laugh. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting out there and, and responding. And how's the training been this week? Yeah, today was we had our main session today, and it was a fantastic one of the, you know, even though we're coming off a, a six day break, and you know, guys might be still a little bit sore. One of the the best sessions I reckon we've had for a couple of months. Troy, who do you think you'll line up on? What? Um, yeah, that's a good one. I'm not sure what their back six will look like at the moment. Obviously, with some injuries coming back, but um, give the brother a call. <laughs> I, I was trying to get into them earlier this week to, to see if I'd get a few tips or, or so what, what they might be thinking but um, yeah, I'd say I'd get one of the smaller types um, obviously going in with, with a few tools then um, you'd think that they, they would match up on their tools so I'd probably take a, a smaller type player not okay. sure who it would be but wait and see um, now, is your brother actually playing at the moment, or is he injured? No, he's he's still injured at the moment, which is unfortunate. It'd be nice to line up against him, but um, yeah, he'll be sitting in the sidelines on the weekend. Who, like, uh, if you do have an argument with him during the game, is it either the umpire or one of your parents who comes in to break that up? <laughs> like, how well, does that go? He's, he's usually playing on the forward line as well, so it'd be an opposite end. Oh, so, okay, that's handy. So I'm not sure if we'd run into each other too much, but um, no, we get along pretty well, so I don't think that'd be too much uh, uh-huh. going on. Who do you think you'll line up on, Chamo? Who will line up on me? Yes. Um, <laughs> Who will line oh. up on you? We'll edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> that was a paradox. Yeah. <laughs> and you um, I'll look, myself and Rowie, the last couple of weeks have t- tended to swing across you know, on their big men, depending on where they're playing on the ground. So they've got, obviously, the big Tomahawk, who's in you know, terrific form, mm. and, and Hamish McIntosh up there. So it'll be you know, one of the two of those, I would have thought. How do you do? You concede any height to Tomahawk because he's a huge unit. I mean, you're big as well, but he yeah, like, he's, he's certainly got a lot of weight. Height, I'm I'm not too sure. Um, it'd be it fairly similar. You might have an inch on me or so, but it, it's more so the, the body size in general. And how have you historically gone on him? 
Uh, I haven't played on, you know, Tommy too often, to be honest. I played on him last year and we had a, a fairly good battle. Mm. Um, in the past, I used to play on, you know, Cameron Mooney a lot and, and, and Podsy Adley. So, mm. uh, to be honest, yeah, I've probably only played on uh, Tommy one, once or twice. Can you um, just give us some impressions on Sam Rowe and how well he's fitted into the back line? Because he's been sensational over the last couple of weeks. He has been great and, you know, it's... It's funny, it's been quite rare that I've had, you know, a, another big tall down, you know, back with me consistently. So mm. I've really enjoyed having Sammy down there. And I think his greatest strength is he, he just sticks to his limitations. He doesn't try and, you know, take do too much and, and, you know, take the game on. He's just, he's a really strong man. So he just likes to, you know, get in a get in a wrestle with his opponents. And as you would have noticed, Tones, he's, he's spoiling in his defensive, mm. you know, acts have been, you know, first rate. So it's been, it's been great to have him down there. So that takes pressure off you, obviously. It well, just means we can rotate if you know one of us gets a bit you know buggered. We can go. We can go and sit the goal square on if they've got a forward sitting there, and we can just fling it round a bit, and I guess be a little bit more unpredictable for for their forwards. So it's been a it's been a welcome inclusion. Troy, the thrill of going out in front of you know many tens of thousands of people. How's how's that for you? Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely. It's definitely something. Um, I'm not usually one to, to get too nervous or too wound up in, in the crowd or the occasion. I usually just like to, to go out there and, and do my own thing pretty much. So um, it's, I reckon the Richmond game last year, the final was 95,000. That was, that was something else. Um, ran out there and I reckon when the, the Tigers ran out, it was the last, probably one of the last things I've, I've ever heard. So um, it's, it's definitely a great experience, um, but try not to, to let it affect you too much. Do you have a pre-game ritual that you stick to? Where you, uh, you know, you have to touch one part of the banner as you go out. Is there anything like um, that? Not, not too much. No, I, I usually like to stay quite relaxed um, before a game, so I don't really have too much of a routine. I'll just do whatever I feel is comfortable, really, and um, just something that will keep me calm before the game. I'd say. It's been a turbulent week for the club. We're coming off a bad loss, and of course, Josh Bootsma. We want bums on seats for the Geelong game. We do, um, you know. It's we want to really prove to the AFL. For starters, we want to play most of our games at the MCG. So if we can get you know huge numbers to the dome, you know this Friday night and, and prove that we can fill up an even bigger ground, um, you know that sends a, a pretty strong message. I would have thought to the AFL that our, that our members want to, you know, our home to be the G, which it right, rightly, rightfully should be. Troy, agreed. Okay, well, you can't add anything more to that. I mean, that's just, you know, you've, yes, you've nailed that. We do want it back at the G. Um, just from a, from this supporter's preference, it's uh, definitely the way to go. Um, just uh, speak to your bank manager before buying a hot dog. That's all we ask. Now, um, who do we need to neutralise in Geelong? Who are, the, who are the players who are likely to do us most Which damage? Which cat do we need to neuter? Exactly. Uh, Beautifully put. Thanks. Yeah. I was happy with that one. Um, oh, well, we spoke about the Tomahawk. Yep. Um, I think Mackie and Taylor are two of their really good intercept players in the back half. And then Salwood and Johnson would be my two for the midfield. And I'd implore you to come up with a better five than that, Troy Menzel. Yeah, you've you've done pretty well there. Um, maybe maybe even someone like a, a Stokes or, or a Guthrie could pop up as well. They've been having high numbers the last couple of weeks. So um, if Selwood or, or Johnson isn't having a, a great day, then, then they're definitely two that could... Could pop up. Now, Troy, you're a first-time uh, visitor to the uh, Carlton podcast, hopefully the first of many. We normally end the podcast by doing a quiz. It's a test to see how well you know your fellow players. I'm going to read off five clues. As soon as you think you know who it is, just shout out the name of the player, who you think it is. Unfortunately, you're, you're up against a bit of a clubhouse leader. Jamo has serious form in this particular quiz. Well, he's, he's only gone up against Mitch, so not it's that. not great competition. <laughs> That's an excellent point. <laughs> Tony struggled to get the first question finished before I've answered these. No, do you know who the quickest was? Jeff Garlett, last week. One of the quickest. Under two okay. seconds. Well, <laughs> one of the quickest. Top, top two. Well, well, was he ta- were you talking about him? Were you describing him to no, himself? No, no. <laughs> All right, are we ready? Are you ready, Troy Menzel? Is it lockout or is it as many guesses as you want? No, as many guesses as you like. Keep going, mate. Okay. I only need one. Now, don't be intimidated by Jamo's record, okay? Or the fact that he's in the leadership group, right? Or the fact that he has killed a man and got away with it. <laughs> okay. First clue. I was recruited by the Blues with selection 44 in the 2010 rookie draft. Levi Casbolt. 
Levi Casbolt. <laughs> <laughs> You just a great sense of gameplay, Michael Jamison, don't you? You ruin that for everybody. Three from three. Can we have another one? Uh, Mads, get creative. <laughs> Come on. Do you want to hear the rest of the clues? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. It could or couldn't have been Levi Caswell. Um, I made my senior debut during Carlton's Round 17 clash against the Western Bulldogs in 2010. So far, I've played 24 games and have kicked 17 goals. Before my days at Carlton, I spent three seasons with the Dandenong Stingrays. It's fair to say I was a Carlton supporter from early childhood. Whilst the state of Victoria is now my home, I spent the first 15 years of my life growing up in Tasmania. Jamo and Troy, I am... That would be Levi Casbolt. Levi Casbolt. Oh, there darn. You go. Thanks, um, Troy, thank you so much for coming in today. No worries. Thanks Good luck for against me. the Cats. Thank you. I certainly hope you have bragging rights over your brother. Oh, I hope so, too. He's, he's been talking him up all week, so hopefully we can get a win. Well, it, it's about time to shut him up, I reckon. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Jamo, uh, SEN has trained you well, or is it the other way around? It's the other way around, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely hold strong to that. All right. Well, good luck against Geelong. Thanks, mate. Thank you for your forthright views, honesties, and paradoxes today. (laughs) Absolute pleasure. Keep the email. And uh, we will catch you soon on the Carlton Podcast. Thanks for your company.